Pixel Podcast with Curtis, myself, Riff, Ricky, and Chris. And uh, it's funny, when we talk to the community, the biggest thing uh, of everybody that everybody wanted to talk about, there was like a million different conversations people wanted to have. And the number one is how gaming in the YouTube collecting world, the retro collecting scene, has changed from when it started till now. And I think we can all agree, even without any sort of thinking, the biggest thing that's changed is the the other question that we kind of had that links right into it is, is reselling accepted in the collecting world? And before everybody jumps in and goes into it, I think my little my little precursor story is that when we were around back in the day, collecting and reselling, being a collector and being a reseller was not okay. Plain and simply, it was yeah. not a thing. You don't do it. It's 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 not even a question. You just don't do it. And then there was this giant period of that collecting scene on YouTube where that's what you did. And then I'm going to credit it. I'm going to start by crediting it. I think the shift, you know, there was this, this gap. There was people who resold and they were kind of the no-no people, which we're looking at Chris, which also Filthy. a collector. But, but Filthy is what it is. Well, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but it was like this, this, you were either a collector or you were, I mean, not even a reseller. You were a reseller scumbag. Back. That's kind of how it was back then. And I feel like the retro Rick era came in. And that's kind of when it was like the shift started where there was like a bridge in between the gap where it was like, oh, he's a collector. Look at the stuff around him. Look what he does. Look how much fun he has doing this. And wait, he has this 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 series that I, I think credits to what blew him up kind of as the $10 uh, game collection challenge. Yeah, He's reselling. He's doing a reselling thing. And I even myself was like, that you can do that? That's like what, That's where I think the majority of the internet started to be like, can we can do both right they they were kind of affirmed because in reality most people were doing that at the time anyway so i want to jump in the reason you know again we have curtis here who's a little bit younger we have ricky here who's a kind of like the expert with me have been on youtube for so long but the main reason i wanted chris here is because you are a lifelong collector with some of the greatest stuff i know but you're also been reselling the longest because you're not just a reseller but you've been around owning stores and in that scene. So I'd love to hear from you first before everybody else jumps in kind of like the process of when you saw, how were you treated, which I've heard stories before of people not selling you stuff because you're a reseller to where, to where we're at now, how big of a shift and all that. Yeah. So I've been a reseller probably, well, I've owned my store. So technically a official reseller for probably 12 years now is when I opened the, the store initially. Okay. And, uh, but prior to that, yeah, I was a gamer, collector, grew up collecting comics, so been a lifelong collector as well. But um, I was, when I opened my first store, I was surprised immediately, like right away, there was a community of collectors, like the people that would come into the shop. And then there was me, and I, I immediately felt like I was like an outcast. Like people would come in, they would buy stuff, but they were like, oh, you're a reseller, you're like not one of us. And I would try to explain to people like, no, I've been, I'm a gamer, like I've been doing this, I'm not just here to make a buck. Um, but I definitely felt like excluded from the community mm. initially. I think it took me like years of kind of like building up a reputation, hosting like events with the community, running Retro World Expo, before like finally the community was like, oh, you're like, you are one of us, even though you resell. But I certainly felt that initially, like there was definitely like, Oh, you're an outcast. You're you're like a filthy reseller. <laughs> yeah. And and I know exactly how that feels because it's like I just went into it full resell mode, right? Because I didn't have much to collect. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't have any money growing up, so it was like, how would I collect things? And then I'd move and move and move and move, and then I'd try to figure out like how do I attain these things without losing a lot of money, right? Because I mean I was broke growing up, so it was like I had to resell to get the things I wanted, you know? Interesting. And I think you come from a very special place that's different than us because we've kind of in some way or not kind of Ricky and I more so in the like in the YouTube bunker, so to say, like in the YouTube world. That's kind of where he came in. You kind of aligned with it. People know you through that. A lot of people know you on YouTube. Uh, Russ worked with you and stuff. Um, you kind of were aware of a lot of the people on YouTube who resold conventions and that. But you kind of came in like not in the YouTube world at all, nothing. You're just an average dude to where this idea of reselling being bad was foreign to you. Oh yeah. Right, yeah, it's yeah. almost like, what are you, what are you talking well, about? Well, I was just a YouTube junkie. I just take in YouTube nonstop. Yeah. But like, I was just full resell mode. Like I was just like all about the money right now. And then I was like, well, I really love these things. But now I came into a place where I was like, oh, like I can start to actually attain things that I love yep. and still make a little bit of money. 
yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And I, I didn't feel bad about it at all because I honestly didn't have money even when I was reselling. So it was oh, more like, yeah. So you do you I mean? collect now? Are you yeah, just a, yeah. yeah, but I am very particular on the things that I do collect. Like I'll grab things and I'll, I love the fact that like I can go out and then uh, find things and then just like bring it to the community and like show it. And then I don't know what else to do with it. Right. Because it's like I don't have a lot of space. So I was kind of initially like that as well, where I was, when I opened the stores, I did not have a big collection of stuff. My collection of stuff is way bigger now than it was mm. initially. Yeah. So I kind of did start, like I, I collected a little bit, like I had a little bit of an NES collection when I opened the stores. How come and that's everybody's first? <laughs> like that's, I feel like YouTube and like, I feel like YouTube itself besides reselling was like built on the NES. I don't know if that's like a credit to AVGN, maybe possibly, but I feel like everybody in that space that was like dude i started collecting it was like at least back then it was like nes that was our background <laughs> when we first started yeah yeah, yeah i was NES. i was five years old got my first nes so that's like my true yeah. passion so that's that's all i was really collecting initially but man over the years now i'm collecting all sorts of stuff comics yeah uh vintage clothes yeah. Ooh, games that's yeah. a that's a that's a deeper wormhole that we could go yeah, into yeah. Yeah. we, we but, all i think all four of us maybe some of the most guilt and maybe at retro rec too yeah some of the most guilty with it's funny how like there's games that i'm like and i've been collecting games for 10 11 12 years where i'm like dude i would have never spent more than like 50 bucks on a video game or a hundred dollars max but when we went into shirts, oh it was gosh. real. It was re, it was real quick from zero to sixty of being like, dude, I'm not gonna spend more than twenty bucks. To me being now like, dude, that only sold for four hundred, and that was, that's that not that bad. Is still going on. I mean, it was just even yesterday. Like we were looking at a shirt that it's like five hundred bucks. And well, I'm like, oh, the, I'll drop five hundred. No, park, that's like nothing. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. How much did you? I mean, this is not, <laughs> flex hour. All of a sudden, how much? Did, I mean, real talk. How much did you spend on that Super Star Fox weekend shirt? Four fifty. What about that hat? Uh, I don't remember when the hat. I think it was like eighty bucks or something which like that. Which is a good deal. I was like, dude, this is great. Deal, yeah. <laughs> which everybody <laughs> listening right now is like, you guys are idiots. That's not cheap. <laughs> I, I I'll, I'll justify, and if those if this goes off the rails, that's okay. I'm gonna justify clothing with the fact that like there's a what, what, see a pretty rare Nintendo game. Pretty rare. Little One of the Samson. Rare, little Samson. You can go buy Little Samson at almost any convention, right? It, every video I edit for Retro Rick, Phoenix Resale, might do stuff for myself. Every convention we go to, we see a Little Samson, right? Yeah. Even though it's expensive, it's still obtainable. But half of Ricky's shirt, you can't buy it. You can't find it anywhere. It's not on the internet. It's not available. It doesn't exist. And if it does, it's like one. And I think that's the big difference that I think a lot of people don't understand with like the shirts that we're into and the hats and all this different stuff. It's like, these are like on a different level of like rare because of most, a lot of this stuff is stuff that was like, Hey, Walmart had like a special weekend in 1993 where that weekend they demoed super Mario world. And we made shirts just for that weekend. And it's like, some people think that's stupid, but to us, I'm like, I feel, it's funny. Cause I'm not wearing one right now. And I felt like shamed when I walked. In the <laughs> I shamed you immediately. Got, I, was he, like, he I was like, got, what is that? He got, he, got, he got out of the car. He looks at me and goes, what no no flex and i was like i well my fear was that we were all going to be wearing black shirts and i was like oh th these are black and i'm like shoot we're all gonna be wearing black shirts and this was the only one i had that wasn't i had i had my star fox one in the queue and my super power fest 92 de shirt that was my option i'm not gonna lie i was like queued up like three last night i was trying on shirts i'm like what am i gonna wear today but my dude, wife's yeah. like what are you doing yeah. i'm like oh man i'm just styling for tomorrow but dude, that's what's cool about the games uh not not the games but the shirts like you can flex like what what, what are you gonna do carry on a little samson with you like oh look at me well yeah. it's funny because i've seen guys at, at conventions do that we, remember the guy we saw a guy one time at a convention with a car he was a super cool dude i've talked to him since super nice guy yeah but it was his way of flexing he was carrying a cart around with what was it super metroids i think he had oh, like 90 yeah. super metroids cib and he was just showing everybody and i was like that's all right yeah that's and his I th flex i think the the what i find in like the clothing aspect is like it's almost like you can just pay respect to the things that you grew up you know it's like yeah. you can put it right. on for show for others yeah and it's like everybody that sees that like oh my gosh like i love sonic or oh my gosh i i love that like nintendo world championship thing right there you know what i mean it's one of those things that you just come back and you're just like 
I, just, I wasn't even alive for it. I just, re- I just realized he's wearing double right? world Nintendo yeah, World Champions. Right. Yeah. This guy's all- <laughs> I, so that's my thing now is I love to actually match these up. Wow. Like I like the, the virtual boy shirt I bought, bought off of you. Yeah. And then I bought the virtual boy hat. Yeah. Biggest and like flex. finding the two of them, flex, right? finding hats is like near impossible too. Oh, I know. Too. Yeah. I know. So to match the two is, yeah. has been kind of a thing I've been doing lately, yeah. which is awesome. All okay, right. So like- transitioning to like the next topic. Oh, I mean, I like um, we got a producer look at, right I mean, here. Look at, I mean, look at. This guy, we can talk about this for hours. Oh, you know that, subject. right? He's like, like, let's just transition to the next topic. I mean, like, is hoarding acceptable in the collecting scene? Okay, so this was a big one for me. So th- this is a huge topic because right. let's let's say this. There's there's always like a good way to do anything in the world, right? Collect cars, the play video games, eat fast food, whatever it is. There's always a good way to do something, like a proper way to do something, and an improper way to do it, right? So with reselling, what's the improper way of reselling? Scalping. Thank. I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually been thinking about that, okay. and it's important to differentiate between resellers and scalpers. Okay, so get they to are that. two completely different things. Absolutely. So I want you to jump into that. But what my point was to what Curtis said is, what is the bad way of collecting, hoarding, right? So it's like what. But what I find interesting in the in the collecting versus reselling world is it's very accepted to point out the negatives about resellers, right? It's very accepting, like, oh, reseller, scalper, whatever the words, we've heard it all. Scumbag, you know? You know? Scumbag, <laughs> and again, we, we are massive collectors. I've never owned better stuff in my life, but the community and even ourselves, sometimes we so, we, we're, we don't point out the bad aspect of collecting, which is hoarding or, or uh, just holding on to things that necessarily are just being, you know, when you go to someone's house, Breaky. And you see 19 <laughs> NESs in a, in a closet, and you're like, hmm, yeah. I don't know. It was 20. Oh, it was 20. Sorry. Up until recently, Ben had literally a thousand games, and he sold most of them to you ben guys. Ben had a thousand. You know but, I mean? yeah, so it was but, like crazy. Yeah. I want to hear where you're going because I'm it's sure you've, you've got more of the brunt of it. Ricky and I are still massive collectors, but we also do happen to resell. I want to know, like you, I'm sure you've been accused of being doing things that are improper have you i mean what's your journey have you ever found yourself being that guy that's like oh shoot i probably shouldn't do this but i'm doing it just in reselling in general you like yeah with what you do have you done the scalper dirty stuff or the scalping i have never i'll be honest never gotten into that maybe once or twice there's been something i've bought that like new when and when i think of scalping i probably it's probably yeah, maybe define to, it better define for those it. who don't yeah when i think of scalping that's like ps5 scalping like you go out yeah. with the intention of buying something that you're never going to use that is like usually generally like new like a hot item that's come out you're buying that and then you're holding on to it or flipping it like immediately Right. And the reason I don't like it is because it's taking away like that's something that people want to use immediately. Like if I want to go get a PS5 and now I can't get it and now you bought one and you're putting it online for 800 bucks. Like I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, of course. And to to me, it's completely different than like us going to Golden West hunting, finding stuff that's like out nowhere land (laughs) and bringing that back almost to the community and reselling it for collectors or us to use and stuff. Totally different things. Um, So as far as the scalping, like. Even with the stores, like we, when the PS5s come out, we set like a trade price at like 350 bucks. They retail for 500. We're only going to pay 350 with the idea that we'll sell them for like 450. Got I it. don't get involved with the like, oh, well, they're going for a thousand bucks. We'll pay 600 bucks. And a lot of times people will walk in with PS5s and they'll be like, how much would you give me for PS5? And like 350. And You're not like, giving them scalper like, prices. Yeah. They're like, well, I can sell it online for a thousand. I'm like, Good luck. Then, then I'll go wait, ahead. and we'll just wait. We'll wait until the price gets down back yeah. to reality, which yeah. is kind of where it is now. Totally. And so I, that probably dates all the way back to, like, when the I want to say when I opened the store. I think the 360 had just come out. Okay. And the PS3. So the scalping was going on with the PS3s back then. I saw, it and with, we didn't partake in it then either. I Never. saw it with the new Zelda. Uh, the Wii U one? No, the new, just now, like the one like two days ago. Oh, well, sorry, Switch. The, the, Switch the, the new console, whatever it is. The new Zelda game has Oh, like it's going to get scalped to death. No, it did yeah. already. It like yeah. dropped yesterday or something, and my buddies were sending, oh, it was Gabo sending a thing <laughs> saying, here we go. And it's oh, on yeah. eBay, 800 bucks. And he's like, what the crap? Ricky, maybe I think it'd be an interesting conversation because, you know, he sells in a store. Yeah. Uh, Curtis will sell on eBay and stuff. You and I really only got into reselling when it came to... To whatnot, we have a very different experience than most people. We don't resell on eBay. We don't really sell on Mercari. I did for a short period of time, but then I stopped. Um, we we kind of live on like a like a 
good luck method. Maybe <laughs> tell people what we do and how we do it and kind of how well, what it does for us. Dude, I feel like for years and years, all we did was go to the swap and just keep everything. And if we ever wanted to sell anything, because it was really frowned upon back then, it was like, I'd sell it to a buddy and that's it. Yeah. So we couldn't do anything else. But honestly, after having, having been so many times, I'm like, dude, it, it has become like a hoarding thing. Yeah. No, you I know. have, dude, I have bins and bins of stuff. Luckily we do whatnot now. So I'm like, all right, let's just, let's, let's have that, let the people have a, have yeah. a hit on it. Then hit on it. <laughs> tell, tell them the extreme of what happened to our buddy. I don't know if we've told Chris or Curtis this, but back in the day when we were pubescent <laughs> teens, no, we weren't, we were in our twenties. <laughs> we were youngins, uh, maybe what a month and two months into YouTube. And we had a buddy. Name Retro Hungry. Why don't you? Dude, <laughs> a good buddy. It was re Retro Hungry. So he had found, um, dude, a pallet. Arrow Fighters. Oh, Arrow Fighters. He had found, well, yeah, this pallet had a ton of games, but but the thing he got like a lot of like flack for was uh, this Arrow Fighters he found. I'm like, dude, awesome. But he sold, he didn't sell it to anyone in the community. So <laughs> when that happened, he kind of got, dude, he got kicked out of the scene fast. I felt so bad. What was it? We didn't see him like a month later. Yep. That was it. It, they just, it, it was so bad that he was just good dude, yeah. collected. We hung out with him all the time, and he bought a game, and he was one of the first retro collectors on YouTube to be like, yeah, I just sold it on eBay, and I got what someone paid for it. And everyone banished, dude, hated, dislike central, hundreds of dislikes. All of a sudden, this guy was public enemy number one, and I yeah. think that's when Ricky and I were like, wow. Like, we knew that reselling was frowned upon, but yeah. I was like, they will hate you. And they will turn on you back then. And I remember telling that to Retro Rick when he like posted on his channel. He's like, yep, I found this for five bucks at Goodwill and it sold for whatever, you know, what it goes for. And I commented back then, you know, I'm still friends with them. But I'm like, it's just crazy because, again, when he came in, it was so foreign to me to see that. I'm like, if I would have posted that on mine, it was a death wish. Like you're sending your channel to the grave if you did that. And you just started like not even like a year and a half ago. I, I've been doing it for about 10 years. And I think Chris, uh, you said 12, right? When Since you opened up the store. Probably even before the store, probably I was selling online mm, strictly yeah. back then. And I think yours so. is more interesting just because you do have to put up a storefront and like how you would get things. When you do get things, is it easier for you? Do you have time to hunt uh, out in the field? I do the hunting uh, now. Like when we go to Golden West and stuff, I do that just because. Shh, don't give our spot away. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so, we no. don't win. It's, we it's, don't win. So, it's so blown up at this point. Yeah. There's so many hunters. There. Our homie Vento back there. Cut it somehow. <laughs> it's funny because it's like I'll run into people like I've never seen on YouTube, but like they'll hang around people that are in the space and they'll, I'll be introduced and I'm like, I don't know who these people are. Yeah. Right. And like, even them, like even when I got introduced to them, it was just kind of random. We just run into each other and I was like, Oh, those retro guys again, you but know, <laughs> the reason I still go out, I think if your question to answer your question is, um, why I still go to golden West, like yeah. the items that I find now are literally like a drop in the bucket, you know, like most of the inventory that I get comes into the store. And a lot of times people come into the stores and they'll be like, wow, where do you find all this stuff? I'm like, it, it gets, it's all trade. Yeah. So when I go and like even get a full truck not a truckload but a you know yeah buggy what do we a buggy, wagon, they're wagon <laughs> a wagon full yeah, like two wagons thank full. you so a wagon full of whatever say yeah. we find vhs or yeah. some shirts or <laughs> you know all miscellaneous <laughs> stuff it's literally a drop in the bucket so why i do it though yeah. is because i love the hunt absolutely right? and yeah. to me that's the greatest thing i like about collecting uh, is going out and finding it which is why you know it's not for money it's not yeah. for anything other than a few reasons now actually I like going out hunting it's good exercise. We'll get out yeah, and walk around. Absolutely. And, and like seeing you right, guys right now. before we drink like 10 pounds of soda and get on a taco. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and now it's kind of changed too, where like you guys are there. Yeah. Our good friend Mort. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and other Tony, all yeah, these yeah. guys that we know. It's like a whole giant. So it's a second family. Yeah. You know? And it so it really is. is. I'm excited now to go on Saturdays to like, like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to see all you guys. It's like a good time to hang out. Yep. We get together. We're going around doing stuff. If we weren't doing that, I don't know. When would we all meet up all the time? Yep. So so there's a few. that's why I go, go still go hunting. Um, I love that aspect of finding stuff. I think you hit it on the head with the, the thrill of the hunt, you know, and then that's been talked about forever on YouTube. And I think that we're in a special position that we've been doing this for so long that I think it's almost detrimental to be able to continue, like at least for us, doing the show. Because if we were only strictly based on what we're finding, we would have quit a long time ago. I'd say like two, three years ago, there was like a pretty good dry spell of us finding like meh stuff. Yeah. Now somehow, I don't know how 
thank you, Lord. We're finding like amazing <laughs> stuff every weekend. But again, to what you said, the fact that we can go out there and have so much fun and we joke all the times to our wives, we're like, we got to go. This is, we joke, we're going to therapy on Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. And what you notice in the videos, it's not put on. It's like, <laughs> we're like a bunch of kids. I mean, we're out there, we're goofing around, we're being stupid. And if you look on everybody's face and you take a moment, everybody's smiling. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a good time. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah, always time. a good time. And so many people, you know, are like, that's competition, blah, blah, blah. But not one of us has ever been like, well, yeah, I wish these guys would leave. It's like, no, dude, I don't even care at this point what I find. Again, thankfully, we've been finding good stuff, but it's yeah. like, but, I'm having a great time. But even like at certain times, like I'll just get what I kind of want out of a certain vet, like a uh, person or whatever vendor. And then I'll be like, guys, hey, this guy's got great stuff. Like there's still a lot of stuff for you to go and get. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Despite what despite how many people are out there, you can go back on our catalog for the last year and a half. And it's like, how every yeah. weekend with, with, you know, people that we're meeting and uh, conversations we're having with sellers and vendors. I've been finding too. One of my favorite, like things I never expected to enjoy was like comment, hanging out with the same vendors. You know, now when they see us, it used to be like, Hey, what's up? And now it's like, what up buddy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just having fun. I mean, we're hanging out with people on storage wars and they're holding stuff for us. And it's just, I don't know. I think it's it's the best medicine you can have. So and it's say. crazy that you have multiple swap meets where it's like people are just recognizing you now, and it's just like you go up to there and you're just like, I don't know what to do. It, it's it's <laughs> it's the biggest blessing I feel like. All right, we're gonna time. transition to the next topic, right, for you guys right now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. I needed this guy. I'm telling you guys, man. For the past, I, I, I'm so glad we got a producer back here. We got Beto Beto back there working on the stuff. We got <laughs> the squad is anyway. working. Chris, getting uh, recently robbed at your game store, is it Ooh. ever okay to steal? In well, let me give an update on that, yeah, by yeah. the way. So, First so, off. Tell us about what happened. <laughs> yes. You got robbed. We did a YouTube short. A little short, bit of but, backstory. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, I think it was last week, actually. Okay. Guy came in, walked to the front door. We have Pokemon binders up front, which have like dollar cards. They're not super expensive cards, but they probably have two to 300 cards in each one. Came in, grabbed five binders, walked out ran out the door pretty mm. much i happened to be by the front window saw him chased him down ended up getting the binders back uh -huh. um so that was my my hero of <laughs> well, the how day can, how can you skip that part in the middle of chasing him down and <laughs> there, then you walk there wasn't and... a huge physical alteration uh, in, altercation altercation yeah. Thank i mean you. i wouldn't but, i wouldn't press you you're too chiseled yeah but before you go on i want to know what you're I, I'm so happy that your re your response was to go get them, right? And I know that don't, I'm not telling everyone to do that. Someone could have gone. I don't know, but I just I'm I guess I'm old fashioned that way. Where that's my mentality is, I'm going. <laughs> it's my stuff, bro. Yeah, don't yeah, take I didn't even think table. about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like it was just innate. I just ran out, went back, you know, got my stuff because maybe that's where I was raised or whatever. It's like don't yeah. take from me. Yeah. Um, but it, no physical big alt altercation or anything like that. Got the items back. The guy bolted off, didn't call the cops or anything. Mm. Well, update to that story today. Guess what happened? That guy um, came back today, what? went back in today, walked in, grabbed. We have loose. I moved the binders into a showcase. He came in, grabbed. We have loose cards. There's like a sleeve, probably of like a thousand cards in each one, Pokemon cards. Walked right in, oh, grabbed two and my. ran out. My guy Eric saw him. So now, now I called the police. Wow. Yeah. Had the the balls to do that again today little does he know we have a youtube short out there that's gaining some traction <laughs> yeah. so if, if anybody knows him or sees man. him i love it I because most of the comments are like man why would you mess with uh chris's man bun and <laughs> you don't yeah underneath oh that guy's he's got a beautiful man bun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i got a lot of heat for that even in the video for my own my employees and stuff for the man bun me. hey yeah, bro you always, can't mess but... with the man bun bro anyway most people who have a man bun are, are strong that's just what i've got hey, i it. saw a video recently brock lesnar's got a man bun you want to go mess with somebody go mess with brock lesnar with a man but no, conor thanks. mcgregor I, I, had I a saw, man I bun saw so. of, i saw clips of uh brock lesnar one time holding a punching bag straight out in front of him like holding it out no elbows bending and flipping it with his hands shwink catch shwink catch i was like I can't even do that with like a heavy water bottle. What a beast. <laughs> like, dude, That's incredible. This, this is insane. Um, so I think what, what Curtis was asking earlier, which I think is, you know, it, maybe this is a different type of topic, but it kind of, when I, when I heard that, you know, I had someone say, well, maybe he need, and I'm like, no, that's not justified. But it did bring up the thought to me of like, you know, you've seen in Robin Hood movies and stuff. And do you feel like in your brain, like it's ever justified to steal something? I mean, there's food, there's what, where's your, where's your brain at? I mean, it's a, it's a case by case basis. We, yeah. Obviously, over the years, twelve years, we have collectibles, expensive stuff. People come in, they steal. Um, 
I I get it. You know, we de- we deal with like all different types of people. There's a lot of people in bad yeah, yeah. spots. Yep. Some people are drug addicts. We get yeah, a lot yeah. of that. Yeah, that come in. I I try to avoid at the you know very last scenario calling the police i don't like doing it you're a little more forgiving yeah Yeah, i'd like to just get the items back say hey you just can't come in here anymore yeah Um, and we've caught many people over the years stealing uh this one where the guys come back twice i've never had that happen especially when he was like caught that's 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 really dumb i mean that's we were just finding the vhs tips last week like world's dumbest criminals that guy would have been a perfect candidate like this guy's coming back yeah the crime scene he must not know you have a a video that you already posted and we posted a thing you know he obviously doesn't aware which maybe is a good thing now do you have like the same amount of like uh problems like you have in the la stores that you have in the east coast stores we've had issues on the east coast um how many stores do you own five five Ooh, yeah that's... in those stores <laughs> flex in... all day bro <laughs> physically <laughs> his clothes yeah. his stores <laughs> um the stores in connecticut they've had issues yeah it's 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 just an issue. Most of it's usually drugs and stuff like that. Got this it. guy didn't necessarily look like he anyone was on ever drugs. been held. You've ever been held up? No. And I was going to say, like the one thing, like at the end of the day, it's just stuff. And yes. so I know that stuff goes missing all the time. And honestly, I just kind of account like, all right, stuff gets taken. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. You yeah. know, I can't sit there and watch cameras all day long. Yeah. Um, some store owners I've seen are a little bit more. You know, they they're like there to protect every little thing. Mm. I don't like it, but I just expect it stuff is getting taken if one of your but, employees chased after someone would you how would you have felt i would be like hey, uh, i've like, already to, i've always told them well i what, them, boys. what i'm most worried about in all honesty is like their safety them getting more than it. anything yeah. and to answer your question no i have never been held up there have been other game stores uh in connecticut that have actually mm. and you know that's a really scary situation like i could it was bad the one that happened in connecticut like it was okay. like an armed kind of robbery wow yeah. so that thank god has never happened to me i hope it never does yeah of course knock on wood yeah um you know and my employees like even this kind of stuff probably scares them a little bit you for know? sure like shakes you up yeah it shakes them up you know we have females that work for us yeah. and other you know some, it's just not something that they want to deal with but Got it. here i am you know police coming into the store today dealing with this so mm. i just like the guy to stay out of the store just don't come back Got you it. know so when I worked for a grocery store one time, uh, I, I was probably, guy. Wait, how long when did I work at Sprouts, Ricky? Dude, that was like 15 years ago. When I was in diapers. <laughs> Ricky had his baby in diapers. I remember Ricky would show up when he was first married with his kid, and he'd show up with, with uh, Gabe in his little like diaper. Ricky was wearing his, what are those things called that you wear? Uh, oh, dude. I'd, Ergo something? What do the, what the guys like wear? The, the bungalow? The bungalow? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I worked at a grocery store and I remember one time I was friends with the janitor. His name is Luis and he was like an older Mexican dude. Super cool dude. He was one of my, my best buddies there. I was, you know, probably a guy maybe early 20s at, at most and he was probably like late 60s and I remember being there and I heard like a, a, like a, a noise and I was like, what is that? And I go out there and there's this guy robbing the place and I was like, well, it's, it's Sprouts, like whatever, he'll just leave. And I, someone's like, dude, he just threw a tequila bottle, t- tequila bottle at Luis's head. And I'm like, wait, someone just hit Luis. And I'm like, I was like in a weird state. And the guy started, started like bolting out the door and I, I'm a runner. And I see this one guy chase him, then another guy chase him. And I'm all the way at the back of the store and he's all the way out to the front and like three or four people are chasing this guy. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to chase him. I'm all the way to the back of the store. But then I see Luis and he's like, Oh my God, oh, he's all hurt. Got a little blood coming down. And I'm like, Oh heck no. So I start chasing after the guy. I start going, I'm being a runner. I just see people start dropping. Like people are like, oh, too tired, too tired, too tired. And I'm just like, for my boy, Luis, I'm going full speed, bro. And I, and I go, I mean, Ricky knows the location from there. I walk all the way out the store in Costa Mesa to the Camden apartments, which is maybe like a mile away. So I'm like a mile deep, maybe a mile and a half running. Again, this is flex hour. I run like six six miles a day. It's kind of my thing. Yeah. So I got to him, and I remember I dove. I dove to him, and my finger went in his belt loop. And I was like, wow, like, what a shot, you know? <laughs> Kobe, you know, I went for it. Got his belt loop, pulled him on the ground, and I just, I was so mad, I think, for some reason. Something like went in me, and I know it's probably not the best thing for employees to do, but I was just so mad that it he hurt my friend, my buddy, Luis. He's an old, old guy, you know? And I just, like, held him down. I was... You know, maybe a little, little, little rough house here <laughs> and there. Brutality. Get well, away with that. Well, yeah. that's the thing. So it was a different time though back then yeah. too. But my, um, when, uh, the, the police showed up and I remember my, my boss Duke, he shows up and he just looks at me. He's like, good job. Good job. And he just looks at me and goes, what the hell are you thinking? 
<laughs> under his breath. And he's like, well, he's like smiling under his breath. But thankfully, the, when the police showed up, they were like, oh, all right, man, it's all good. It's all good. And I just kind of, you know, what's your name, son? And I was like, oh, Bob. And just kept walking, you know. But it was just one of those situations where, you know, I, I don't know. It's we- It's a weird situation to be in. So that's why when I saw you kind of like, you know, fight or flight or whatever they say, and you were just like, man bun bouncing around all the way. I was like, go, Chris. Yep, well, they- so I had an option to physically like actually grab that guy. Mm-hmm. I got the binders back. Basically, what I did is I hit the binders out of his hand, his arms, and they spilled all over the place. I grabbed them. He bolted. So I, But I could have tackled him. I could have restrained him. I could have done all those things. Yeah. Now, in hindsight, knowing that the guy was going to come back again, I'm kind of I'm like, I should have done that. Yeah, I hard. had no idea that this guy was... And he's he's obviously going to come We're back again. We're not proposing again. violence, anybody. No, but, 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 you, you. but me as the store owner, I can do that. I would never ask my employees to do that but i kind of wish that i had done something because you're mad now well i'm just kind of like really yeah like come on i like thinking like okay i got the binders back yeah. scared the guy off never gonna see him again mm-hmm. literally less than a week this isn't months later this isn't like six months later like the next week the guy is back what and i'm idiot. like what so which means he's probably gonna be back in the next couple of days he's gonna continue to just walk in grab stuff bolt out the door and i've never had to deal with that you know usually people are trying to they're pretty sneaky about it. They're trying to stuff down stuff down their pants. He's going for yeah. the big boys. He's just running <laughs> in, grabbing <laughs> stuff, and going out. And I'm like, what the heck? Dude, so. now, now I'm bummed out now that I know the story. Because in my head, like after watching that video, I just pictured you clotheslining the guy. I shouldn't have told. Yeah, I, I was like, just oh, left no, it no, just no, open no, ended. We, we, we all imagine like Chris <laughs> running, and, it, and his like shirt flew off, and it's just like six pack. And the guy's like, oh no. <laughs> Chris tackles him, man bun in the air, and he's like, I still think that. Gotta catch him all, yeah. buddy. <laughs> we'll just edit that other part out. <laughs> all My right. hopes and dreams. So all we're right. going to transition like, the next big thing, I guess, is like, okay. uh, why don't we collect video games, quote-unquote, anymore? Ah, got it. So that was a, a conversation. That's a that's a clickbait title like, right there. I like that. <laughs> it's basically uh, my thought process on this was, right, we collect video games. Of course we do, right? Yeah. But I think... We, and I'd say maybe guys like Retro Rick, he's always, he's very much like us. I wish he lived down here. He'd, he'd be, do well in this spot. But most of us collect, and we've talked about we collect shirts and that. But our obsession and my hype, you know, for a lot of the stuff that we collect really doesn't come from video games anymore. And obviously, I still love it. I still collect them. But my excitement is for, like, things like paperwork and things like promotional items and a, a card or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'll let Ricky kind of dive into that one a little bit where our, our brains collectively kind of even together have like molded. It's just molded. It's like, it's, it's not even games. Anymore. It's like nostalgia. You're chasing the nostalgia. Like when you find that air, uh, the cone heads thing, the oh, display, yeah, the sign. it's like, dude, it has nothing to do with video games, but yeah. it's beautiful. You're just like, wow, remember blockbuster when they used to have this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's your, cha- I, I guess we got, we got a little tired of just doing games all the time. It was more like, look at that. Look at this. Whoa. And I think a lot of the stuff, like, I think I, Chris was one of the first ones that, that I saw flex. When we first went to a store, I was like, oh, dude, this is some pretty good stuff. When he had all the shirts up on top. I was yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that, and, and, and that is a real thing. I mean, when you're doing this stuff for so long, like anything, right? Like I can only hold so many Flintstones surprise at Dinosaur Peak. Yeah to where my my interest is not peaked as a, as a, you know. But so it's interesting that we went from these things hardcore dedicated every day. That's what I want. I want this, want this game, want this game, want this game. We've started going to conventions. I think conventions in some way k- killed my excitement for this cut stuff because I saw it all. You all know, like, oh, man, I see it all. So that's why when we go to the Swamp Meet and Curtis is like, Look at this piece of paper I found that went in an old Nintendo book that I've never seen. I'm like, you can't find that anywhere. Go <laughs> yeah. on eBay. It doesn't exist. And now before you know it, we're like our animation stuff. Yeah. Promo passes. Yeah. Guys. And I still haven't even been to an expo, so I wouldn't even know what that feeling would be. Right. So I've, I never had the time. I always had college. This guy runs work. an expo and he doesn't even yeah. invite you, bro. Yeah, right? <laughs> you can come anytime. Man. <laughs> yeah. On your own dime. <laughs> now, now, now no, no, no. Go to to buy tickets. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I would I wouldn't mind. I mean, now that I'm like kind of going into the space, I would love to do it because like, you guys are kind of introduced me into the community and I, it's like a blessing. But also, yeah. like, why do you think like cardboard and paper have mm-hmm. just skyrocketed as of recent? In the last couple of years, I have plenty to say, but I talk too much. Anybody else? You're talking about like the paper. Like, I'm talking about like boxed found. games. I'm talking about like paper, like as in like mechanic paper from Nintendo from like 1985, 1990s. 
Um, I feel like it's everyone already has like games. So if everyone's collecting the same thing, it's like, all right, yeah, he has it. He has this. But when you get like the funky, like, oh, dude, I got it box now. You know, now everyone's like, oh, no, I need it box. It's one of those like uh, one of those things when you see someone have it, you're like, I need it. Yeah, sad. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but, it's, but it's true. It's so sad. <laughs> but, but what you're saying, too, with like paperwork and stuff like that, too, I just think it was so... Yes, I do know that people were into that stuff back then, like, right, the weird, obscure items. And and this stuff, it's almost like a weird conversation because you almost can't even really talk about it because we don't even know what that is, right? Because we're hunting and we don't realize that we want it. So to say you didn't really want it, but that you were looking for that until you find it because it's – we're always in that mindset now of, like, we're looking for those things that when you find them, you're like, I didn't know that existed, yeah. right? And that's kind of the stuff that, that gets all of us now is, like – I, again, if I see a rare game, I'm very, very likely to look at it and be like, I'll buy it, maybe not. But I'm like, cool. But when we find, like you said, didn't know I wanted a, a vintage Paramount light up sign that you can switch out items for that had an original <laughs> blockbuster box. But when I saw it, my brain's like, that's my excitement. And I'm I, excited now. I had no desire to get that for some reason. He, he goes, too he goes, young, you didn't bro. buy that? He doesn't know like, what Conehead Oh, is. when he saw it, I was like, hey, Besides a looking like a Conehead, he <laughs> <Yeah. doesn't> <laughs> <laughs> I look like the thumb from, uh, what is it called? I just look thumb like Wars? A, I don't Either way, I look a thumb. Yeah, like That's my actual visual of myself. <laughs> so do you think you guys are, are liking like the paper and the Paramount thing because it's more obscure things? Like they're one-offs. Like nobody else has this. Is that? Yeah, and I think that when you've just hunted as much, I mean, again, Again, and I will say this with with humility that I think we we may be one of or maybe the longest standing game hunting channel that does it not the longest we weren't the first ones but that has continued to do it week after week after week after week episode 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 ep so that's not that's not yeah. me it's gloating that's saying with with humility I can say that we've been doing it that long that it's almost like I have to find those things that make me still go oh dude sweet you know what i mean because like i said I, we've seen you know obviously we haven't seen every game in existence but it's like i have to find those things at this point and those are the things that like bring me joy so to say in the game hunting world so when i see that stuff like paperwork now i don't know why paperwork oh press kits Ooh. that's been a big one for us lately i think my goal too like even doing what we do is like to find this stuff to what you said earlier about the thrill of the hunt find it document it put it on youtube because i almost feel like we hold maybe some sort of responsibility as you know having a, a channel with a, a lot of people who watch thank you um like some sort of responsibility to be like hey this exists so if someone ever searches it or it sparks their memory one day when they're older and they go man i oh i forgot remember nintendo press kits i wonder if anyone's ever done a video you know it's like it's there it's documented as some sort so yeah yeah my biggest yeah. thing is like when i get that type of stuff it's almost like i want to save it right because like, what if we don't document it, right? And then we just throw it away like everything else, and then that then it becomes a one off somewhere else. Yeah. But like, no one it'll be in somebody's game stash for years and never see the light of day. You yeah. Or, I mean? or or speaking of that, I mean, you wanting to save it, so to say. I know, and then this is totally normal. Obviously, this is the ninety nine percent of the world. If you do find that thing, you know, you probably don't have a YouTube channel. You probably don't have something to show it off, so to say. So you sell it, do your thing, which is totally fine. But what's great about the show is I feel like it gives us an outlet to be like, shoot, we found it. Let's show the world. And then whatever we do with it, whether we keep it or sell it or let your game room flood and let it get ruined. That was an option for me. <laughs> or you can collect it and put it in your shed. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I don't think that was a good idea. All the paperwork in my shed after my shed <laughs> flooded. So, so keeping on like the, the same topic, um, like who would have been like the biggest introduction for you to be collecting? Ooh, baby. Chris. I like that. Go ahead, Chris. I mean, on. I watched... And was it NES Pursuit? Yeah, then? baby. Was it NES Pursuit back in the day? We used to play it on the TVs and the stores. So you guys were a part of that. I mean, yeah, early on, probably watching a lot of YouTubers uh, collecting back then. Okay. Because like I said, when I first started opening the stores, I was ne did not have a huge collection. I still don't. People think like, oh, you have a huge collection because you own the stores. But like, I'm surrounded by this stuff all the time. Yeah. So what I find that I collect is like more just a like, it's not necessarily more obscure. It's probably, well, it's a combination of obscure, valuable, but yeah. like, I mean, the stores are like a collection. Um, but as far as other people that uh, might have influenced me, yeah, it was probably those early YouTubers. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ricky, retro Hunters. Who are you? Oh, Retro Hunters. Retro. Yeah. It, was, it was funny because and, you I. You know, Billy I, and Jay, but Retro Hunters is where, dude, I remember you introducing me to them. I was like, oh my gosh, we do this. We do this. And you're yeah. like, you know what? We should film it. I was like, 
they were a good introduction into us wanting to do YouTube because when we saw the Game Chasers, again, they only started like maybe a year, year and a half before or something like that. Yeah. But they were a little more like production at that point. And I was like, well, I don't really know that stuff. So when I found the Retro Hunters, I was like, oh, they're just two guys, idiots, and they're having fun at swap meets. And I'm like, that's us. We're two idiots who go to swap meets. You know, it's it's that's a whole different story for another day. But yeah, I think the Retro Hunters, uh, along with Game Chasers, were just were a big inspiration to put it on the Internet. I would put it on bef- like the night before we went to hype myself up. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Because that, that is a real like, thing. Oh yeah. Because I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch skate videos that d- right before I'd go skate. Because I'd be like, all right, now I'm going to go <laughs> kick up this big ledge. Like, I'm going to do it because I got hyped. And like us being the nerds now, we're like, dude, I'm going to watch this guy find that game. Like, yeah, I'm going to find a game. Like, <laughs> and I think the the biggest homage that you, I think you always play into was the American Pickers. And totally. like, I, I, love I, it. I they were responsible oh, yeah. for the game chasers too. Yep. Yeah. And that's kind of like what got me that. into it. As, as well but i didn't start collecting until about four years ago so did a uh, question did you any of you guys co- like collect in any sorts when you were younger anybody i was never uh able to i was always moving i think i moved about 25 I, times in my life so remember when i first started i was doing like randomly like vintage cameras for some weird reason <laughs> when you were like a little kid uh i would say that was the first thing you started collecting but i don't think you were like a little i wasn't kid. like a little kid i was probably in high, like, so the hot wheel school. ricky little kodak you know for me it was comics <laughs> like when i was a kid oh. comics i was a, which is why i collect a lot of comics now but when i was a kid i was a comic book collector i collected pogs actually pogs, there you kid. go all right so you did so we were we were so i did but we were super poor and i'm talking like poor 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 so i used to hand make my my pogs we'd get paper and we try to fold them and then tape them together and like cut circles around them and use those because we couldn't afford them. So that was like our version of pogs. And then I'd randomly like find an old magazine. And the only way I'd be able to get them is doing mail-ins, like doing a mail-in. Like, hey, you send this in, you'll get a free pog. And I quite literally remember seeing like the mailman drop off like the old classic movies. Like mailman pulls up and I'm like, there's my pog in there. And it's like a green slammer. And I just take it to school and be like. That's awesome. Those dude, were the days, though. Yeah. Dude, I, that's, I, 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 I wasn't take... my days. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't collect anything as a kid? Nothing? I, I mean, honestly, I, I tried. Uh, but, I mean, my mom would just sell it at garage sales. But every time we moved. Shh, filthy oh, reason. I'm oh, telling God, you, man. Your mom. <laughs> man my... But your mom needs to come on the podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> your mom's a filthy <laughs> reason. Yeah. Man, my mom would sell things, like, by a quarter. Like, all those videos that YouTube was like, oh, we scored on this one. I'm like, yeah, that's probably what mom you scored on right there. Because oh, she would dude. sell a whole Nintendo set for, like, five bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, that was that was i mean i i traded what was it i traded uh little samson for a super scope <laughs> wow that's a good trade yeah for the little samson for the little samson his, him yeah. and his brothers had a and sweet collection and yeah, they so, traded most of it off yeah so being of video games yes so, so you were a collector yeah well video so games so too. being poor we got this stuff always late right we didn't get nintendo when it first came out so we didn't have like the mario bros that it came with and stuff so we had all the late releases, the Bubble Bubble 2, the DuckTales 2, the Panic oh, Restaurant. All the good ones. We had all yeah. that stuff. and you all had that, Panic Restaurant? We had Panic kid? Restaurant. Oh we, had all, so we, had, we had all oh the goodies, man. All the goodies. But again, that we, we were so poor that when we got that stuff, it was like, nobody cares, dude. I mean, we didn't care about it. I mean, we were, when I say poor, bro, I mean next level. I remember going to, <laughs> I remember going to like the, the, the shoe stores, like shoe warehouse, but it wasn't like the nice ones, like Shoe City or whatever. I don't even know what's nice anymore. Like a shoe warehouse, I'm buying blank shoes for like four bucks. And my sister was super good at, at drawing, and I would have her physically draw Nike signs on my stuff. Nice. Because I was like, dude, I want hey, people. At least to, she's an artist, you know what I mean? I want people to think I have Nikes. I mean, we we would we would. I mean, our food was from bread lines at churches. That's our where I was from. Yeah, Ricky too. Ricky grew up not even far from me, and we didn't even know. We didn't even know. We like we a couple blocks. We had very similar. You had two drive bys done on you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tell dude, them that man. for real. Uh, dude, I just where we grew up, it was it was insane. It was uh. I just remember when I was little, my my uncles were all like Joel O's, like oh, what, what, those. Yeah, yeah. so no matter what, like uh, it was always bad in my neighborhood. But dude, I remember when I was a kid, I was I was like five or something like that, looking out the window because I heard a car pull up, and out of nowhere, dude, they pull up in the nicest like Impala, and you just see this guy with shotgun, do 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 do. Oh, is shotgun driving by? <laughs> trying to take out your uncles? Trying to well, I was the only me and my uncle were the only one there, but no one was out there. They were just shooting at the house. Oh, so Jesus. my my uncle grabs me. Throws me in the closet and jumps on top of me. Oh, that's cool. That's a good yeah. uncle. <laughs> he was going to say my uncle grabbed me and used me as a shield. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> He's like, you can't get me. <laughs> Dude, that's why. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, right down the street in Santa Ana, I grew up maybe five minutes from you and didn't know. And Dude. I remember, dude, like t- Christmases, we'd go to Toys R Us, the same one you went to. And we'd go, tr- dude, we'd go trash dig for Christmas presents. 
that's what we'd have to do. Sounds like fun. It, well, and maybe <laughs> that might even be some, you know, psychological reason of why I collect or f- like to hunt and buy things or collect. But like, yeah, we'd go to the parking lot and jump the back and we'd go, hey, we're going to and we would do it with my, my aunt, my uncle, my brother, my dad. And we'd go look for Christmas presents. And that's how we had to do it back then. So I don't know. I don't know if that plays into like the a psyche of it, but. Well, yeah, because the psyche, I think for me, and I was thinking about it, like just in collecting in general, like when I was a kid, really just comic books was what I collected. Mm. Had, a, had a fair amount of video games that we played yeah. and stuff, but I wouldn't say I collected the video games. We kind of played them and then gave them off or whatever. And, Got it. Um, but comic books, I remember being a kid and they had the wizard price guide. If you remember the wizard anybody know about comics <laughs> yes! the wizard and i remember just sitting there like every month i want to say that wizard magazine would come out and i'd have like spawn number one which was like worthless it was like five bucks and then it'd be like 525 and i was like yes 25 cents and i would just watch the values of these things go up and down wow. and i think that that played a lot into like why you know as i got older and then i opened up the stores i'm like that's probably why i love this so much like as a little kid just sitting there for hours on end looking at values of comics and stuff wow yeah not that i own a comic book shop but it plays into you know what we do kind of looking at the values of these collectibles going up and down and i've always been fascinated by that how how did you know early on that it'd be like a sustainable living for to own a store knowing that like nostalgia was kind of like a growing like a small like a like a small growing community Oh man, that was a big leap of faith at the time in my life. My, my wife was pregnant. Um, actually no, she, yeah, she was, she was pregnant when I first started hunting, finding games at the flea market. I lived in Vegas Mm -hmm. and I was going up to North Las Vegas, finding video games just on the side, selling them. And, um, I was in commercial real estate at the time with a suit and tie and everything. And then I, um, I was selling online, like going to the flea markets and buying stuff, selling on Amazon and eBay for good probably two years before Mm. I was like, I'm making more money doing this than I am with my salary job. And I started putting together a business plan and was look, there was a few other video game stores even back then. And then at one point I was like, I I think I'm going to quit my job. And wow. Yeah. Moved to Connecticut and just opened up a store, no job, no anything. And yeah, wow. that was a, it was it was a kind of a leap of faith doing yeah, that. Yeah, because I, when I got into reselling, it was more of just like a little extra cash here and there on the side for me to go do things. Because, I mean, if you don't really have any money, you got to figure out a way to get it right. You got to sell your own stuff. And I was like, you know, it's like morally obligated. Like I probably paid more for it and then I'd sold it for just as what I, what I could get for it. It's kind of like what not you take your risks. Yeah. And you just kind of go for it. Yeah. But I think as I saw more content in it, I figured out a way to uh, just kind of elevate the way I pick for things and create my margins, you know, and which I feel would be, would be scary. And this is a whole nother topic. We can jump into it, but emulation. Right. And I feel like that might've been like a scary thing as a store owner. And I think this is, this opens up this whole conversation yeah. right here, plain and simply is where emulation, it's almost like reselling and collecting. Like there was a very long period of time where emulation was like, stupid it was dumb and trust me we we lived yeah. it we heard it and and i agree that the best way to play a video game the most enjoyable there'll never be anything like popping in a cart and playing it but obviously now at this point it's more accepted it's yeah. more part of it did emulation ever play into your store or like prices was there a period where you were like oh shoot people are going to start emulating and not care about this stuff yeah very much so okay. there was that was probably maybe like two, three years after I'd opened the store. So I opened the store in 2011. I want to say like maybe 2014, 15, all of a sudden, like all these emulators started coming out. And yeah, at the time people were like, oh, that's it. Retro games are done. Everybody's just going to emulate this stuff. Um, and so there's been that phase of like, okay, going up against emulation. Then there's always the talks that games are just going to go completely digital. Nobody's going to care about this yeah. uh, physical games anymore. So for 12 years now, that th- there was a lot of worry about in my mind uh-huh. that like okay this might fail at any point um a couple things i did to kind of like to, uh ease my worriness about that was uh kind of diversifying the store so like we don't just sell video games we sell video games we sell comics we sell pokemon cards we sell vintage clothes we sell action figures um in case like yeah at any time i was like okay nobody wants to play retro games anymore yep. this is just the business is gone you know i have a family to take care of yeah so that's kind of eased like a little bit of that worry um and then over the years i mean it's just been a slow incline and in, like uh interest in collecting in Got general it. across whether it was pokemon cards the action figures 
um, all of that, where I feel more confident now that I'm like, all right, as long as we're still alive, yeah, I think people are always going to be interested in these games to some degree. Now, past our generation, like my kids that didn't grow up with Nintendos or your guys' kids, like they didn't grow up with that, I don't know. They might not be. And there might come a point in our lives where we're like, all right, we're not playing these games anymore. We're just buying them. But see, I think we'll even still collect. Yeah, like, yeah. I think even we could be 60, 70 years old, which isn't that far off anymore, right? <laughs> well, we, it's not that far. I mean, you got to think about it. You have a guy who's a fan, and he's a seven-year-old collector. Yeah. Actually, a few True. people who watch our show, they <laughs> comment a lot, are in, upper in the 70s. And I have a lot of older gentlemen that will come in that those are most of the Atari and television collectors. True. They're not us. I don't – I don't. Reaper. not many people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With the guy who get, buys most of our Atari stuff, and I think I asked him one time, his name's Reaper67, shout yep. out to him, yep. um, and I think he was like, I'm like, oh, are you actually 67? And he was like, yeah, it's almost my birthday, and I was like, awesome, and he's definitely our Atari guy, so to say. And even at the swap, I always see Ben pick up like Commodores and Ataris, he's, he even owns a Atari 5200 that he's collecting for at the moment. I mean, it's kind of insane, because like, I have no idea what that system even is. So, right? I, yeah, and I love the old vintage <laughs> stuff. Um I'm not so much an Atari player. I remember my dad having an Atari and playing a little bit of Atari. Yeah. But what I love is like vintage PC gaming, like Atari 520 STs. I feel like and, PC gaming is gaining a little bit of traction as far as like in the collecting world. Because back then it was like, eh, it was pretty much just Metal Jesus talking about PCs, you know, Metal yeah. Jesus back in the big box PC game. But now I feel like even myself, I'm being like, oh, these are cool. These are, oh, these boxes are actually nice. Again, being people who are starting to look at boxes and paperwork i'm like hey this is really cool even though I, I have to admit it's almost like a weird guilty thing because i technically didn't play that stuff so to say so i, I don't feel bad collecting it so to say but i mean i don't know if i could emulate it but i i played that that was Did like, you? oh man we had like what was your game were you were you like king's quest so were king's you, quest what, like, what, level, totally what, different. what <laughs> level of nerd were you with pc gaming because there's lots of levels and i say out of respect my brother was one of the biggest nerds with pc game ever and with respect i mean that guy knows games I, I just know my dad at some point i must have been maybe like six or seven bought some computer he never used the computer so it sat in this office he never it, it, so nobody used it i think i was the only one in the family that used it i have an older brother too somewhere along the line i was getting these games maybe he was buying them for me i don't even remember but i had king's quest police quests like doom early on on pc oh, doom. um <laughs> all those like point and click type adventure games are like oh my gosh i love those so much i could go back and play that right now you can go on steam i think and you can download do those. people uh, this might be the dumbest question ever do people emulate pc games or is that like what they are well, steam steam has a lot of them if you want to call that emulation yeah. kind of do, do you find emulation to be wrong Let, let's be honest everybody does it Everybody emulates and plays emulated stuff. Not saying everyone does the emulating, like the actual work to emulate, but 99.999% of people I know play emulated stuff. Not not wrong, but I do feel like you're missing out on like, I'm like, okay, yeah, go ahead. Like people will come in and be like, oh, this is all a bunch of garbage. I can just emulate all this stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, <laughs> that's cool. But like it, you're missing out on us going out and hunting and finding yeah. all this stuff. Like well, I, I feel like they think like, the, oh, I've outsmarted the system somehow. And I'm like, well, you're but, just missing on all the collecting fun of this. Yeah. You know, so yeah, morally wrong. I don't know, like legally and stuff. It doesn't I find it me, interesting. But. It's just like we as collectors also have been in the space where it's like big companies are now reselling these emulations to you. Right, they're they're selling you the, the classic mini classics. They're they're selling you the hookups to their TV, like the old AV components, Pac Man, and it's like, what is that any different than us owning the original game? It, it's it, became legal emulating, right? Yeah, so to say, I feel like it's diff It was different back then, like even like the old school stuff right now. Like I, I got like a double like reward because you. Remember back in the day, you had to make it work when it was like a little older. You'd have to do the little shift and so blow bro, in it. You got the shifter right, right there, here. bro. So, dude, I used to I used to get reward like after after doing the shifting. And in my head, I'm like, all right, now I got to play this for at least an hour because true. I don't know if that thing's gonna start up again. So, I mean, I, that so was a good. double reward for me. <laughs> and then your cat walks by and its tail oh, graces it. It's oh like, my gosh! And you're like. No God! <laughs> please don't erase. Please don't erase. Please don't turn it back on. Erase. The save game erase. I, I say that because I experienced that. Mega Man 2, final boss with my brothers. School time. Classic story is Tales as Oldest Time in the Retro World. Got to the final boss. Pause the game. I'm going to go to school. I can't believe it. We're going to finally stink and beat Mega Man 2. Two seconds later, I see my cat just walk by, barely grace the Nintendo and just the screen. And I was like... <laughs> We, we used to leave it like we would leave it like overnight go to school 
come home the next day and just be like, yeah. please be on, please yeah, yeah, be yeah. on. Like I'm right in the middle of this game, you know, no save, no yeah. nothing. Like, yeah. I, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, did any of you guys ever leave it on and have it burn that onto the TV? Yes. <laughs> Stuff still does that, dude. A Mac, a Mac computer recently at, at one of the offices I work at, my buddy Mikey would leave it on. And I went back one day and I turned it off and it was still on the screen. And to this day, you can just see the outline of the browser. And I'm like, dude, that sucks. That's that sucks. That's actually crazy. No, but what you were saying about it being like, you know, companies now are basically, you know, they got smart. They make the classics. It's not, it's, it's technically, I mean, or is it, I don't know. I'm not smart with the, the background. Well, or uh, they whatever. say like a remaster of like uh, Turtles. Well, that's a whole nother conversation is, is remasters, bro. And remakes. And I feel like that stuff to me was very exciting in the beginning, right? Like, oh yeah. dude, they're making an HD this. They're making a, they're redoing this. And now to the point, even going past just games, right? It's, it's Hollywood. It's movies. It's the Disney movies. Yeah. And the excitement I feel like is going like this. Mm, it's uh, like, it's oh, a, it's a little I want to play Resident Evil four. I'm not going to lie. The okay. remake. <laughs> I do want to play that. I, I get that. I understand. And I, I, I'm with you on mo I, I, I don't I'll play them. Right. Like I could play Mario two on any console and smile the same, which I feel like Nintendo man just found a way to, to get all of us. I feel like they could release Mario two with a different color palette for the next or Mario three for the next 20 years and everyone would buy it. Yeah. It's just yeah. I, I think it was like what like I can't ever like recreate is like when I used to leave a sign on the wall and I'd be like I'm in the closet, mom, and I've had my TV cord running in there <laughs> and I'm playing Mario Kart. Chris is in the closet, y'all heard? <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. I'm like playing Mario Kart like all chinned up and everything, just like on a wood trim TV, and I'm hoping like I'm beating everybody in that little that Nintendo 64. And I was in like a weird transition where it was like I had cartridge base and then I had CD yeah. base, right? Mm. So it was like. I would just get the hand-me-downs from my older brother. So I Got went from it. Nintendo 64 to PlayStation. Got it. And then it was just like, well, you know, what's the, what's new? You know, like, yeah. how do you go about it? You guys went from NES and, and seeing that technology develop. How did oh, you? Dude. Isn't, I, I've thought about that before. And I think that's one of the craziest things that we're not, yes, technology is advancing, advancing at such a fast pace. But I feel like, like our kids don't get a witness that like when games, when we were, our, you didn't even see it as much. Wow. Like, Going from the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo to the Nintendo 64 yeah. to the GameCube to all these consoles was like everyone that came out, you were pining to see these screenshots because you're like, look how much different that looks. It's, it's oh my gosh, the graphics look so much different. And to now, I'm going to be honest, the most I've ever been let down from gaming ever and the generational gap was the current jump to PS5, Xbox Series X. I tried to get myself hype, and I feel like I, I convinced myself, like, dude, I'm sick. This is, looks so good. And I played it, like, it looks better. But in my head, I'd be like, it doesn't look different to me. Yes, I'm sure it does, but I, I was so let down by that. So I haven't been gaming as much, but I have, I was like, all right, I want to get back into some gaming. I've just been busy, right? And I was, like, But I still love gaming at night. So I was like, all right, buddy of mine, one of my managers at my stores that we, we game together, he's like, let's play Back back for Blood. Mm. So it's like the old Left for Dead. Yeah, yeah, it's like a newer Left for Dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, all right, I've never played it. So I have an Xbox One uh s i think right so the new like no series not, not a series s? S? Okay. like an older one i just yeah, yeah. even though ps5s come in and xbox yeah, series yeah, s, yeah, like, x's come in so I, that's what i have so i i loaded up last night and he's like what are you playing on i'm like oh the xbox one s he's like oh dude you have to see the graphics on the xbox series x i was oh, like no. bro <laughs> there is no difference he's like no it's beautiful on the xbox series x i'm like i guarantee you if i plug that in side by side i'm not going to notice any difference he's like no it's such a big difference i'm like Dude, go from Super Nintendo to N64 or Nintendo to yes. Super Nintendo. That yeah. was a big difference. Which was it's, the most impressive to you? Which jump? N64. N I think from Nintendo. From Super Nintendo to uh, N64? Because that 3D look. I remember, you know, Mario where they have it like Boys uh, R Us. And you're yeah. just looking at like, whoa, look at that. His face is coming out at me. Well, it wasn't, but. You could play with it. Yeah. For me, it was Xbox to Xbox 360. This that guy. was a big jump, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, 360 was, was actually, a big jump. I'm not going to lie. For, that was pretty good. For me, it was NES to Super NES. Me, too. I was blown away. Me too. And I loved the NES. I was like, I remember being a kid and just being like, video games are never going to get better than this. That's so And funny. then <laughs> Super Nintendo came out, and I was like, I mean, just the colors and the pixels and the way it looked, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much more beautiful than Nintendo. How did they do this? I, I it remember, was like mind blowing. I to was me. with my brothers and same thing. We saw Donkey Kong Country, right? Like we put it on, we put it in these, these pre-rendered graphics looks amazing. And I remember looking at them vividly and being like, it's not going to get better. Yeah, it this will is it. never get better than this right here. 
And it might not. It have. might not. Have. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the pinnacle of video games. Was the Super Nintendo? Well, in my opinion. I mean, we could jump into that real quick. Best console of all time? Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, Nintendo. sixty four easily. Okay. So I'm not an N sixty four guy. I was I was in college at that point. And it, was it was the system that thing. I grew up on. Yeah, I know. So. that people appreciate it and love that system? But for yeah. me, Super Nintendo. And I, I don't yeah. say that like I'm not like religiously like thinking that that's what is the best system of all time. But yeah. I think for me. It was, right? Yeah. It just hits different. And for a lot of people, I would say the majority of people is probably N64. I feel like N64 really gained, like, love again recently. Yeah. I feel like yeah. for a while, it was kind of, like, not a joke, but it, people were definitely poking fun at it, like, in the YouTube reviewer scenes for a while. N64 was kind of like, eh, the controller doesn't really have that many good <laughs> games. It's mostly, actually, there's a clip of me what? peeing on it. Nint Nintendo 64 console well, from the old video. <laughs> yeah. But... I feel like it's gotten love again a little bit more recently. That and GameCube, I would think those two are, I mean, like GameCube has gotten a real strong following as of late. Uh, yeah, big and, time. And big. it's just GameCube jumped. And, and awesome. it could have been because of Phoenix Resell easily. Well, but YouTubers definitely, I'm, I'm, we've seen it, you know, and I don't, yes, there's, well, that's a whole other topic for another day. YouTubers raising prices or this or that, which I can agree to an extent of many of that. But yeah, I feel like. There's I've, certain YouTube series or when people are talking about things, you know, Metal Jesus has been accused of it. And whether it's valid or not, definitely YouTubers collecting something has a push. I mean, ABGN, but yeah, Little Samson, anything almost a YouTuber would talk about would be like you'd go to a game store and they'd be like, look, I have this. I have Action 52. But they wouldn't have said that if that YouTube video wasn't out because nobody cared. For me, it wasn't just like uh, like it wasn't a price thing. It was more of like him introducing it again to collect and then appreciate the system. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that's when I was like, oh, I actually love that system. I remember putting it on this big old giant TV and doing the four controllers and destroying oh, yeah. people at Super Smash Brothers and creating terrible <laughs> friendships. <laughs> that's what he tells himself i know right i know i had friends right dude my, my grandma really... sucked at that game yeah. it was me versus my grandma and my dog i won every time all yeah. right well now we're going to transition to a little bit uh a uh, different topic i guess as at least within a different space like being 10 years on youtube how do you avoid being in the youtube conflict how do you avoid it oh boy yeah this is a fun one uh and we can we can finish out on this is yeah drama in the youtube scene man it's um it's weird because there's parts of it where, where Ricky and I have always stayed out of drama on YouTube that we just always have. That's been our thing. Yeah. We've always been having fun. That's just been the motive for, for us of why we do this. But there is that question sometimes like, like if you even go into right now, like the current thing, it's like DK oldies, right? Like I'm, I don't even watch those videos. I'll be honest, like what people are saying about it. But I know right now, like that's where it's at. Like everyone's talking about DK oldies and there's, there, there is an important question to ask yourself. Like, can it be important though? Is this stuff important to talk about? Whatever they're talking about, maybe it is important to the community. Maybe it's not. So we kind of, the way we did it, we had to make the decision like, okay, well, even if it is, we're necessarily not going to talk about it unless it was like detrimental to what we do. And to be honest with what we do, it was never buying games online, no. right? That was never detrimental to our show. It didn't really pertain to us. And then there's me who also creates content. I understand content. I know, and I'm going to probably make some people upset here. For sure, for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, a ton of the DK oldies, anti whatever it is, are doing it for views, right? And that's where it becomes, where there, there's something to be said about that. I feel like the people who are doing it because they care, right? And that's important. People who run stores, people who do online buying, people who know what, a certain console is supposed to look like or feel like or or whatever it may be know things about it the intricacies of selling and i know those people are out there and i and i you know commend those people doing videos like that but i do know i'm well aware that there's many people out there just doing it strictly like well if we put decaldies in our thumbnail heck maybe we'll even do it for our video on this topic because <laughs> you, you know do you think it's a little clickbaity in, in the sense of like are you shedding more attention to it by rehashing that type of topics yeah, it, it's definitely clickbaity, but I'll also be honest that a lot of YouTube, you kind of have to be clickbaity to an extent. I think that a, a YouTube thumbnail should be an extension of what does happen, but of course it's not reality. You know, I mean, if it's, it, it's always an, an extended, more hyper sensationalized version of what really did happen. Yeah. You know, people will put, I bought a DK Oldies console and it was broken and in the thumbnail it's, it's on fire and it's like, well, I'm sure it didn't catch on fire while you were playing it. I still don't get how it got so popular though. I'm like, all right, I, I see the title. I already know what it is. 
Like, oh. I'm well, I mean, it's also like, on. yeah, it's also like in the same aspect. Like, if you go into GameStop and they give you seventeen cents for a game that you bought for sixty dollars yeah. like a week before, and yeah. you're like, that's true, and you're just shattered. You're like, oh my god, I just yeah. made the worst investment of all time, yeah. right? And it kind of throws into the fact that it's like, are we like? shedding too much light by talking about certain spaces right yeah. on people well I, I think that what we kind of had to decide is that i'll never like i'll of course we'll we'll, we'll you know you got being on youtube if you want people to watch your video you kind of have to not be clickbaity but something that's interesting right but i've always felt for us that i've never wanted to be like my method of getting more viewership is going to be by putting someone else's name down right so to say yeah even though it it, it, it is and again it, it may be justified this is me saying those videos aren't justified because i'm sure many of them are but i've never felt comfortable being like and i know i could get views if i do this or do that but i've never been a fan of like bringing down someone else in order to make and there, again there's something to be said about it but i've never wanted to be like if i just bring this down i'll be elevated you know what i mean it just never sat right. Do you think it yeah. benefits the community in the end, like talking about like these type of things? I don't know because I feel like if people are buying – again, this isn't me defending. I don't watch the no, videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like if people that are buying from DK Oldies anyway aren't necessarily the, the collecting hardcore right. scene, right? I feel like those people – They're just trying to get they it. They know. They know how to collect. More than likely, I won't for sure put it past that, but I feel like maybe it's more like the people who are just like, oh, you know, shoot, I want to buy a game online and – they yeah. don't know what the prices may or may not be going for out on other websites. They come through it. It comes in their their ecosystem of, you know, they search video games. That comes up, and that's where they want to yeah. buy it. And, Chris, uh, coming up on the topic of, like, stores running social media accounts, do you think that you're going to be in the upcoming events try to do the same thing, like get into YouTube space other than – I know you have an Instagram you kind of promote there, but how else would you think that you're going to be able to, like – expand your brand TikTok. oh <laughs> <laughs> i love how you said it too He's it was like it the man bun stared man. me directly in my eyes we, we actually did get on TikTok Ooh. recently i was like okay we're gonna try this out we thousands and thousands of views on wow TikTok. So, we just make silly little TikTok videos okay like are they fun are they yeah because i mean you, you, i mean we, we all no matter what can say those decal these the, their videos they were at get why they went they were fun they were entertaining they were silly whatever that may be but are you guys going to try to go that route like with marketing so to say not like you know i think why dk oldies and not to go down this mm -hmm. whole road of the dk oldies thing but maybe why they were a center of attention possibly is because they did have a youtube channel from yes, my understanding i, I didn't think. watch it that much i've seen some clips of it here and there but i wonder if that's what kind of drew some attention like okay they were just a reseller online for the Got longest it. time nothing ever really happened with them mm -hmm. then out of the kind of the blue and i could be wrong in this but i think out of the not out of the blue but some point the guy Joey, I think, who's like the face of DK, mm -hmm. I guess he's not the owner, started making YouTube videos. It seemed like it drew a lot of attention to them, maybe. Yeah. Which is why they were kind of like more of like out there. Because well, there was a face to kind of go after versus just some online warehouse which selling is, games. Which is why, you know, people will come at it. Not saying, again, I have to reiterate a million times yeah, that yeah. I, I'm sure there are whatever. We don't really watch this content. Yeah. Exactly. Now, so. But with something that's elevated, right, it's an easy way. If Ricky and I went viral on our channel for something in the next two years and we just blew up to be a 10 million channel plus more people automatically are just going to come out with the negatives about us because <laughs> you're going to use my likeness to get views there was a, a song i heard along i can't remember who said it but it was like a quote from his song and he said how's a man going to say i'm clickbait if he's going to use this face to get clicks on his page <laughs> and i was like wow yeah. that's, that's heavy say. that's a heavy heavy thing to say and so for me as like a store i myself personally like i think i made one youtube video like okay. 10 years ago <laughs> i think it was about like P PS i think it's on there ps2 <laughs> reselling prices or something like that Shout it was about the that prices one. of ps2 games i think it's live <laughs> one video ever yeah. but myself personally i'm more of a behind the scenes guy like yeah. i like running running the business i like the yeah. operations i let my guys handle the social media this is uh, other than like the videos with you guys on youtube yeah um i don't generally come out i'll do some podcasts like this uh mostly about the expo and do a few videos and stuff but i don't generally like i don't like voicing uh, or coming out too much as like the face of my business got it because i want to protect my business i don't want like right. you know yeah. i don't know i i think that that's how dk oldies and not to say you shouldn't do it but that might have been why they were a target 
You, you know. better hope the podcast doesn't explode. <laughs> no, no, I'm like putting myself out there as I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, these are all the things I, I mean, haven't done. <laughs> you got to look at it like this. I mean, Retro Rick just attained a store, right? And so he's kind of showing the behind the scenes of that. Do you think you might do that, that same route possibly? No. I mean, I've thought about that. Like, I was like, oh, man, Rick is killing it because he yeah. had the presence of the, the viewership of the YouTube. And um, I, I, my understanding from talking to Rick, I'm good friends with Rick, too, mm. is that his business has been incredible with yeah. the new store that he bought. And yeah. I think the platform of YouTube has certainly totally. helped him. Kick what rocks, it, Rick. We always joke for those that don't know. Again, us all being very similar in what we collect, him and Rick are like... Whenever Ricky and I get cool stuff, he will reach out and so will Retro Rick and be like, all right, who gets to buy it from them? And Chris gets mad when Rick takes it and he, we make a joke that his thing is Kick Rocks, Kick Rick. Kick Rocks, Rick. I'll look at the camera. Kick Rocks, Rick. I'm buying this sign. And, and, and then another, uh, I guess, kind of a wishy-washy topic, but it's more of a question. What if they opened a store that was kind of like across town from you? Oh, Ricky and I. Yes, you too. Ooh, what if and Ricky and I? How would you feel about open it? Open a store down the street from. Would you there? help them? Would you? Ooh, let's hear it. This is this is kind of a, not a touchy subject, but this is an yeah, interesting yeah. subject, and I'll tell you why. So, when when so if there's have been people that I've known that have opened stores okay. nearby to me, mm -hmm. not yes, and what happens is it changes the dynamic sometimes mm. of a friendship. Oh boy, and to. Now you're competitors. Competitor relationship, whether you're Burger King and McDonald's or yeah. um, Coke and Pepsi or anything, there's trade secrets. There's it, it's sometimes it's not that you're enemies, yeah. right? It does change sometimes the dynamic of that. Yeah. Um, what I've always tried. So, like an example is in Connecticut. There was a video game store. And I'm not going to mention any names. Yeah, of course, or yeah. was a guy that I knew, more of an acquaintance. Yeah, yeah. He, we, we knew each other well. Like we talked to each other. We had interactions, and we always we told each other at one point, like, "Hey, let's just make sure we we keep our distances." He had a store that was probably like 30 minutes away from me. I had one uh, on a main quarter. He was a couple towns over. At some point, he opened up a store literally like a mile down the road from me, mm. and I messaged him, and I was like, "Dude." That's like, why did you do that? Yeah. Like, why, yeah. why? What do you so, say? And he was like, oh, I would, he's like, oh, I, I couldn't find another place. I had to go out down the road. And I was, and he would come into my shop. He would buy like inventory for himself. And I was like, dude, this like kind of changes the dynamic. Yeah. Like, yep. you've got to stick to yourself now. And he only lasted about a year before he then closed that shop down. <laughs> like, and I was like, okay. But he still has his other store, which is really successful. Yeah. Yeah. And we've talked since then. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're not like blood enemies right. like they hate each other right. and we've talked about it and i was like and he was like hey listen I, he explained to me that he had no choice but to open the store there and i was right. like i don't know dude there's like thousands of places you could have <clears throat> yeah. put this store i yeah. think even though we knew each other he was like oh i'm gonna put a store right next to you yeah and it was like okay now we're now we're competitors now i have to compete against you. right. you're trying to take business from me which is mm. essentially right. taking business potentially off you know play to my right my family right so it does change the dynamic. If right. you guys were to open a store or, or something, if that's something you have in mind. We don't. No, 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 no. Uh, I, was just, I just but, wanted to see what your opinion Chris just wanted to ruffle your feathers yeah. a little bit. I love it. But, but I, the, the thing is just space, right? Yeah, like, right. and how far is space, right? Like, I don't know, in a big city like LA, you could probably be 15, 20 minutes away and yeah. you're, ne you're in a different market. Yeah, you know, like Costa Mesa is a different market. It's than not like a beach. Starbucks where 98% of the world is walking around looking for a coffee. You right. know, in the retro game world, you're probably going to find... 6% of the people in Costa Mesa that are out looking for video games. So yeah, and like in, you're literally 15 minutes away and you're in a different market. So oh yeah. like, yeah. so um, space matters, right? Now, yeah. if you opened up a mile down the road from yeah. me, yeah. Beach, I'd be like, come on, guys, <laughs> come on, really? Guys. Like that's we kind of messed bro. up. Dang, I can, I just, I just <laughs> He's like, damn, we got to cancel the lease. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just saw it in his eyes. I, I just saw that in your eyes, like almost like a little bit of sadness. Like, like you just mentally told me, don't you ever open a store around me. Um, now, at the same time, I would be a hypocrite if I didn't say this. I have done the opposite, where I have opened a store directly down the street from a competitor. Guy I never met in my life. It's a big name oh, franchise. Now he tells us. <laughs> By the way, I did that twice. Now, now I, I did it with that intention. I don't know that guy. I'm not friends with him. Yeah. My understanding was he was not a collector. He came in purely as like a reseller. He came. This is in Connecticut, not in Got it. California oh, okay. here. What a big, in a big franchise. <laughs> no, but I. But we actually didn't really get along. Yeah. We never met. We've never met. But we were like direct competitors. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I want to be the best video game store in Connecticut. I'm going to open up a store right down the yeah. road from you. And we've we've competed against each other for probably like 
seven years now. We're both still in business. Yeah. Oh. So we operate next to each other and still do good sales. Got so there's it. no like hate. But that was a point where I was like, I was like, okay, I don't know you though. You know, right. that's the yeah. difference. Right. I, I think, think we're, that's what brings the dynamic a little bit different. It does. It changes it. And right. I think that's the best way for us to end the, the end the show today is just Chris's R- actual Ruffle. scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> he Honestly, us, he's a no, beautiful but, scumbag. Um, I, I love, the, the, to me, it's business. I love right. business. And uh, yeah. that, being competitors is part of business. It's also another reason, like, I don't <laughs> go out in LA and I don't know too, too many of the store owners yeah. out here. I yeah. know, like, the Game Tower guys, yeah, if yeah. I can mention a name. Yeah, of like, those guys are awesome. They're great guys. Right? We love them. Yeah. Elliot. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. So, like, would I ever open a store next to them? No. I know yeah. those guys. Would never do yeah. that. But I don't know. Business is business. I'll just say that. All right, if you're a scumbag, <laughs> leave a comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, let's get out of here. I mean, yeah. we got to get out of here. We got the, the rest of the day. We got more of these coming. Chris. Yeah, thank you for thank being you. here. Let's, uh, yeah. Chris, thank are you, you going to around me. these more often? I would love to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to be on Ricky, there. we yeah. give a hand for everybody here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Curtis, so we're, now, we're now opening up a store? Cancel the lease. Right? <laughs> it was right down the street. He's like, Aaron's like, I just signed it. <laughs> All right, we're out here. Adios, everybody. See ya.